Well, welcome to this tutorial. Here I'm going to show you a nice, neat, simple way to use a VBA to perform an advanced find, replace, and update procedure. So let's say that we have some tabs here with maybe inventory, and we want to click a button over here to check the orders for Acme. So we want to go through all the worksheets except for specified worksheets. We want to check a specified range, and we want to go for all the Acme entries that have a quantity below a certain value, and then update the order column. And the procedures that I'm going to show you here, well, it is so amazingly flexible. You're going to be able to change it so easily for whatever you need. And if you like what you see here, make sure to check out my full VBA course that covers so, so, so much more and going to allow you to automate your spreadsheets to save you hours and hours and actually probably weeks of time throughout the entire year. I'll put a link to it below this video. Now, uh, let's go ahead and get this working. So what we have here, just two worksheets, but you could have as many as you want, and a simple data table. Now, this is not an actual table table with the insert tab table, so I'm not going to be dealing with that there. But it's very easy to update to use for that. You can watch some of my previous tutorials to figure that out or just watch my full VBA course. So let's go to the code window and get started. Alt F11. And let's go ahead and clear all of this out. So if the module isn't already here, just go to insert and module. And you can have an option explicit at the top if you want, just means you have to declare all your variables. Helps with errors sometimes. And let's go ahead and create a sub. So find, replace, update, advanced. And all we're really going to have to do here, a couple loops, a couple if statements, and that's really it. And it's very easy to expand. So for the variables, we only need a few to make our life easier. Let's make one to refer to the worksheets, and let's make one to refer to the dashboard as a worksheet. And let's go a last row to make it easier to go through all the data as a long. And how about a counter variable? We're going to be using two different types of loops here. One will use i as a counter variable. So let's go ahead and get a reference to our dashboard set ws dash control space to fill that in equals worksheets dashboard. All right, now we're actually ready to go for the loop because what we're going to do here is we're going to loop through the worksheets, then loop through the data, and within that perform all of our checks. So it's actually fairly easy. Let's go with a nice for each loop for now, for each a worksheet in uh, this workbook dot worksheet so we go through all the worksheets next ws and if you've been watching all my tutorials this pattern should look relatively familiar to you by now if you took the course it's definitely going to look familiar to you so we're going through all the worksheets but i don't want to deal with all of them so let's go ahead and exclude the dashboard if ws dot name does not equal ws dash dot name then and if okay and by the way, if you have a lot of worksheets that you want to exclude, or you only want to go through one worksheet, then you could change this check right here to say, if the worksheet I'm going through equals this name, the name of the worksheet I care about, then do this. Or you could set this as an array. So store a bunch of worksheets up here in an array, and then check through that. You can do all sorts of really interesting things when you get a bit more advanced. But we're going to keep things simple here, and you can expand it as you need. So now we want to get the last row last row equals now what last row do we want to get well we're currently going through all the worksheets we want to get uh, this uh, last row so let's say i always know the data is going to be here i just don't know where it's going to end and i don't want to loop through a bunch of non-existent rows so we're going to go for a column that we know will always have a value in it and use that to get the last row pretty standard stuff so a last row and what worksheet do we care about? The one that we're currently in inside of the loop, WS. And we go for cells, rows.count. And let's go for column one. It's always going to have a value and end. Excel up. If this looks crazy to you, just check out some of my past tutorials. We use this guy so often. And once you start doing it, you won't even think about it when you type it out. 
So now we have the last row that has data in it. I don't need an offset this time because I don't want the next empty row. I just want the last row. And we'll use a nice little loop here for i equals 1, 2. Where are we going? A last row. And next i. We do not need a step value here. We're going to increment by 1 each time. We can start at 1 or we can start at 2 because, well, this is a header row. But the header row is never going to match in this case, so I don't mind going through it. Let's make it easy when we read through the code later and set it at 1 for the first row. And if you made this guy into a table, this is where you would change things up a bit because you could refer to it in a different and potentially more accurate way using the data body range for the table. I've done that in other tutorials. We're not going to be doing that here. Or if I show you every single caveat, it'll take forever. So for i equals 1 to a last row, now what do we want to do? We're going through all of our data, and it's time to make some checks. So I want to check if the manufacturer is Acme, and I want to check if we need to get some more orders. So if our order quantity, or this guy right here, the quantity, if that is too low. And you can make as many checks as you want, by the way. There's no limit on that. Check every single field in the row. Check a few of them. Check if one is capitalized, one's not capitalized. Check the third letter. There are so many things that you can do. Here, we just want to make sure that we are matching what we care about. So this is where you can have quite a lot of interesting code that's going to be specific to your situation. And when you do that, I have a great tutorial on this in my full VBA course. I show you a few different ways to make checks down here so that you can have a nice organized set of data. So you can make multiple true false tests on each line and then combine them into a nice, simple, succinct if statement. That's a great thing to do. I'm not going to show you here because there's so many things you can do. But it's in the full VBA course, link below this video. I'm going to show you just a nice, simple way to do it here. So what do I want to check? Well, the worksheet that we're on, cells, and how do we get the current row? Our counter variable i, nice and simple. And what is the column? It should be 7. That's what I have in my notes. Or no, that's the next one. It should be 5 because let's actually go ahead and check. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Manufacturer. And then for quantity, that'll be 7. So ws.cells i, comma, 5, dot value. And I want to see if it equals Acme. But there is a little trick I'm going to show you here. It'll save you so, so many headaches, besides making sure that you put a period there instead of a comma. <laughs> case. Case is such a pain. There's many different ways to check or change case. You can even do it with an option at the top of the module. But let's make life as easy as possible. Make it easy to read our code. We don't have to go to the top of the module. Lowercase right here. And right around there and lowercase right here. And when you get more advanced, this guy's probably not going to be hard-coded text. It could be, well, a variable that holds a value, or it could be a constant. It could be all sorts of things that are not defined right here, but way up in your module. So L case here and L case here, a good little system to keep in the back of your mind and use it when you want to compare text, but you don't care about the case. So we've done one check. But let's go ahead and do another check. And I'm going to use underscore and go to the next line and hit tab for the next check. So I want to check if it's Acme and if the order quantity or the current quantity is too low. So ws.cells i comma 7 dot value if it's less than 7. And you could have as many of these checks, one line per check to make it a little bit easier to read. And go ahead and put the and or the or in front so it's easier to read. If you put it in the back, you're going to keep going back, left, and right, and left, and right to figure out what each line means. So we keep the and there. At least that's how I like to do it. Then, and let's back up, and if. So I only have two checks here, but you could have so, so many. And now maybe you see why it can be a little bit easier to manage these checks outside of the if statement, store the result in a Boolean variable, so true false variable, and then just check that variable right here. But let's see, where we are right now is that we have met our criteria. Criteria met, do something. All right, what do we want to do? Well, let's go ahead and just put yes in this column. It's a very, very simple thing. 
And so we go ws.cells and i for the row, eight and dot value equals yes. Nice and easy. And believe it or not, that is it. That is all you have to do to make advanced find, replace, and updates. But you don't only have to do this. Maybe what you want to do is you want to find all of the ACME entries that need new quantities or need new orders. You want to store them in an array variable or another worksheet. Then you want to export that worksheet or save it as a PDF and export it. And then you want to automatically email it to your supplier. That is a very, very useful, fun little thing. And you can learn how to do all of that and so much more in my full VBA course. It's not that I'm trying to hide it from you right now. It's just that there are a lot of steps involved in it, but they're really not that difficult. You just have to learn how to do each step separately, and then you can combine it in a nice way that'll save you so much time because you don't have to just do it for Acme. You could do it for every manufacturer here or every category or every type, every item ID, and you have the dashboard, click a button, and then all those orders are generated as PDFs and sent out in the emails automatically. And you want to review them before you send them out because maybe you don't trust yourself or you don't trust technology, understandable. Then you can have the email so they're just presented for you with the attachments. And you double click the attachments, make sure everything looks good, then click send in the email. Okay, I'm telling you lots of cool things that you can do with this feature. It basically never ends. There's so many great things that you can do. So let's go back to the code and just go over it once more, make sure everything looks good. And it does. So Alt F11, and we can right click this guy and go to Assign Macro. Click that. OK. Click away. And check the orders. And go to Data 1. And there we go. Yes, for all the Acmes that have a quantity less than 7. And the same down here. And that is all there is to it. So go ahead, get a nice, neat little structure like this working, and then expand it to do everything you need to do. Now, one last thing I'm going to tell you. Those of you with a keen eye, maybe two things. Maybe I'll add a few <laughs> little caveats right here. Not caveats, additional things. If you have a lot of rows of data, this could end up quite slow, only because we're checking the value of cells quite a lot. So it depends on how many things you check, how much data you have. What's the easy way to fix that? Make all of this into an array. If you take my full VBA course, you know how to do that. And the other thing is that we just hard-coded where we want to go through here and basically where we're going to go through here. But you could have these set as ranges or tables, as I mentioned earlier. And that way, you're just going to loop through a table's range or just a regular named range or just a range. In other words, you might not just set this as a hard-coded one here and then hard-code these guys. There are so many little things like that that you can do that could improve the efficiency of, well, how everything works. But that's really more if you have a larger workbooks, much more standardized workbooks. However, you're pretty much going to follow this same setup, just with small changes, even if you use arrays or ranges. Now, I've said a lot here, but I hope you're at least getting an understanding of how to make this setup so that you can expand it to work for your data set. For this tutorial, that's all there is.